What's up guys, this is Dave from Otaku, and as of just a few days ago, I've been studying Japanese for one year. Cool. Thanks for checking out my video guys. Um, so like I just said, I've been studying Japanese for one year. I've been doing this using the like MIA, AJET, Let's Learn Japanese Method. Basically, I've taken a lot of the principles from all of those things and I bundled up it as my own as pretty much anybody at this point would. Um, it, it's awesome to stick to a method um, religiously, I guess, but I feel that most people kind of find their own way eventually. Um, and while a lot of the ideas and all those methods are great, um, you know, it just changes over time. Um, so your opinions about it are really going to form yourself when you're doing this kind of thing. But anyways, um, after learning Japanese for one year, I feel like I have um, some pretty good advice for people and if nothing else, I can at least ex share my experiences like I have been for the last year or so, every three months, right? Um, and maybe you guys can get something out of it and if nothing else, uh, this is just a great way to track data for like my little you know, Japanese experiment. Cool, so let's go over some of the stuff that I've done. Um, I started studying Japanese on, I believe it was 17 May of 2018. It was right after I uh, got back from going to Japan. Uh, I went to Japan with my wife on vacation. Uh, it was a great, great experience. At that point, I had studied maybe like six chapters of Genki. I knew zero kanji. I knew how to read hiragana, katakana. Um, and I had a very, 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 very basic vocabulary. Um, we're talking maybe, maybe a couple hundred words. I'm not even sure on that. Um, but a very small vocabulary. Um, and yeah, so while I love Japan and I was able to get my basic point across to people when it was like, I want to buy this or I want to go there, uh, one of the big things that I noticed was I couldn't understand anyone's responses, like at all. I also couldn't read anything. Like without kanji, walking around Japan, you're just not gonna be able to read anything unless it's written in English. And while a lot of things were written in English in like Tokyo, once you got to like Kyoto and Osaka, not the case, right? So. So anyways, I originally started doing this whole method um, on the 17th of May, 2018, and I started off with uh, traditional RTK. So I went through the entire book, it took me about three, three and a half months, I um, you know, did kanji every single day, I wrote them all by hand, I did not do the lazy method, this was before anybody started suggesting doing lazy kanji, that was back when lazy kanji was still like, thou shall not, <laughs> um, and of course that opinion has completely changed by now. Uh, I, I did RTK traditional way, like I said, and I don't personally recommend it, but we can get into that in just a little bit. So I finished traditional RTK and I decided to personally go the Tango route. So um, the JLPT Tango prep books that are really popular, um, decks are usually provided by Nick Marine or Matt vs. Japan once you've proved uh, that you own the book. <laughs> so I won't be distributing them, but yeah, so I decided to go that way. Um, so I started the Tango method. Um, I started N5 book, what was it, 1st of September, right? Um, and while I was doing that, I read a lot of Take Him. I don't know if I ever actually finished Take Him, but I read a lot of it, and I still use it um, fairly often for reference points. So, um, yeah, went through every single sentence in the Tango book. On November 6th, I started the Tango N4. Um, at that time, uh, around that time, I also took the JCAT. Uh, around my like six month mark and I made a video about that so if you guys want to check that out um, go ahead and check that out uh, I'll put a video I'll put a link in the description for the video uh, shit <laughs> around January 5th I started doing the tango n3 book and uh, a lot of people don't do this book they stop at n4 and I can see why, honestly. Um, a lot of the vocabulary learned in the Tango and 3 book wasn't necessarily like daily common conversation vocabulary, but what I did like about it, this book right here, <laughs> what I did like about this book was um, it introduced casual Japanese and it stopped using like pretty nice phrases all the time. So you learn a lot more like, I don't want to say rude Japanese, but like a lot more casual Japanese and how to say things that aren't necessarily always, you know, rainbows and sunshine, right? So that was pretty cool. Also, for me, I'm a busy ass adult. Um, I can talk about that in a second. <laughs> but, um, you know, so for me, having a pre made system to do uh, my cards every day was a big help. I did end up suspending a lot of the, the cards in this book. Um, basically, by the time I got to N3, uh, I was using Nuke Marine's decks, so he had um, all the extra words added in. So by the time I started doing this book, 
um, any of the cards that didn't have native audio to them, I pretty much just suspended almost right away unless I thought it was gonna be super useful, which most of them I didn't think were. Uh, so yeah. Um, and then, you know, the big question, <laughs> as of, what was it, April 17th, I started sentence mining. So that was a really, really exciting process for me, um, and I can talk a little bit more about that um, in a bit. So a little bit about me, just so you guys can know who I am if you haven't seen my other videos. Um, my name is Dave. I am active duty Navy. I'm a cryptologic warfare officer. Um, I was enlisted before that. I've been in the Navy for like six years. Uh, and when I was 29 years old, which was last year, I decided that I was pissed at myself because I didn't know another language and I thought being bilingual uh, was important because right, a lot of the world is. Um, so I decided to learn Japanese because I'm a sadist <laughs> and because I thought it would be the e easiest language to convince myself to do. I've always been a pretty big nerd. Um, I've always liked anime and video games and manga and all that stuff. Um, so being able to get closer to that seemed cool to me. And also, um, in summer of 2020, uh, there is an extremely high chance at this point that I'm going to get stationed in Japan. So uh, if I could experience that at a higher level, that would be awesome. Plus being bilingual would be great. Anyways, so let's get into it. Um, so Tango, for me, for um, vocabulary in general, right? So I finished DN3 around mid-April, I started sentence mining. Um, now I have just about 400, just shy of 400 mined sentences, and I'm doing this using a combination of Morphman, uh, subs to SRS, and the Netflix, Netflix frequency list. Um, if you guys don't know what the Netflix frequency list is, it's a frequency list that I made um, using uh, Yoga MIA's subtitles that he ripped from Netflix. So he ripped like every single subtitle from Japanese Netflix, right? So I took all those subtitle files and I ran it through the Japanese text analysis tool. Um, what this did was it gave us a list that we can all use and I made another video on that actually too if you want to check it out. Um, basically showing you what the most common Japanese spoken words are. Now I know that the way people talk on TV is not the way that people talk in real life, but it is a great measure of it and it's probably the best one I think that we have. If you guys can find something better aside from just like transcripts of people's conversations, which sounds terrible. <laughs> um, yeah. So what it's also great for is is it's based on Netflix, right? So it's based on shows that we will watch and a lot of us are learning through immersion. So having an immersion frequency list for our immersion sources is great. Um, and then something else that somebody else did, um, a guy on New Brains Discord, uh, no compo, he made a spreadsheet and um, what it does is if you put your known morphs into this spreadsheet, it will compare it against um, not only the uh, Japanese uh, Netflix frequency list, but it will also compare it against other shows that you want to load into. I can show you guys that a little bit when I start doing my demonstration part of the show. Show. <laughs> so anyways, I think that using a combination of steps to SRS and Morphman and this frequency list, or any frequency list, but especially this frequency list, um, has been awesome. I started using Morphman and Subs to SRS alone, and I know that when you use Subs to SRS and Morphman alone, it does try to create like a frequency list of its own, right? But it just kind of pull, pulls from the most frequent words that you have of shows or whatever you have loaded up into your Morphman, um, which is okay, but it could be a lot better in my opinion. Um, and by learning the most common words in all of Netflix or in all of one show, your immersion is going to get a lot, lot better. And for me, it definitely has increased and it's definitely helped a lot. Um, like I said, I've done about 400 new cards since I switched over to sentence mining. So I've been sentence mining for a little over a month. I do 15 cards a day, um, which is pretty standard, I think. <laughs> um, and I've noticed since sentence mining that my immersion has gone up a lot. Not only has it gotten me used to the grammar that is used in like dramas and the way that people really talk, um, as opposed to like the grammar that you would find in the tango books. Uh, it's just overall increased because I'm seeing a lot more common words. Cool. So let's talk about stats real quick. We can get back into that afterwards if you guys want. Um, I do about an hour of Anki a day, about 214-ish reviews according to Anki. I do 15 new cards a day like I said. I have about 5,000-ish words, so after a year I feel like that puts me right on track as to where I should be. Uh, it might even be just a tiny bit high. Um, when I run all that I know through Morphman, it says I know 3,752 morphs. And from here on out, that's pretty much how I'm going to start comparing myself. I have about 3,700 morphs, right? Kanji. I actually, I restarted Kanji. So um, for those of you who watched my last video, or my previous videos rather, uh, I, I don't like Kanji. <laughs> I'm gonna be real with you. I originally did traditional RTK. I wrote every single kanji out um, and 
while I had a good experience while actually doing it, I don't recommend doing that at all. Um, soon after, as soon as I started studying the Tango books, um, I switched over to Lazy Kanji and um, I continued to study for a while and then I noticed that my reten uh, retention just kept on dropping more and more and more and more and then I just stopped doing it altogether because I really didn't enjoy it. Um, and yeah, so now that I'm a year in though, um, I decided to restart Kanji. I'm using Matt vs. Japan's 1000 Most Common Kanji deck. Um, I don't think it's the best. Honestly, when I compare it to the Netflix frequency list that was made, that I made, um, some of the kanji that are in there that are considered like common kanji uh, don't have words until it's like the 7,000th most common word. So uh, I think that, that that list could be tweaked, but I think it's the best that's out there. I'm also a big fan of Nick Breen's 555 deck, or if you take you know his um, his first 55 deck and a second 55 deck and put it all together and did that, you know, it would be what 1,010, no, 1,100 kanji. That would also be pretty good. 1,110 kanji. Uh, yeah. So I am doing that deck, but instead of using the high sig word, hey sig words, I am instead adding Japanese words to it as well. So I haven't deleted all the high sig words in case you know. Um, I'm having a hard time with the Japanese word that I added or I don't know the Japanese word that I added. But what I'll do, and you guys will see this in the demonstration part of the video, uh, is I will get a new card and I will um, copy and paste that in the, um, the actual kanji into the example spot and then I will find the most common one or two words on the Netflix frequency list that I have and I will paste those into the example word spot and then I'll use Awesome TTS, which is the Anki add-on, to add audio to it. And so far, I think it's been really great. It's one helped my reading capabilities a lot, and it's also helped really reinforce some of the words I know, and it's actually taught me a couple of new words, right? So that's pretty cool. Cool, so reading. Um, I'm actually really excited about this part, and I've been reading a lot more, and um, I'm really uh, proud and happy to say that I actually finished my first light novel. So I read uh, Kino no Tabi, um, Kino's Journey, and uh, it was a really cool experience. Um, when I explain it to other people so far, I've been like, it's like reading through a cloud. So like, <laughs> at the beginning of the book, like chapter one, I mean, I could probably barely tell you what it was about. Um, it was, it was painful. It was looking up a lot of words. Um, it was just like understanding the grammar and really getting the picture um, was really, really hard. But by the end of the book, it felt like, aside from maybe like a couple lookups per page, like one or two, maybe three, um, depending on the, the words that were on the page, um, it got so much better and so much easier. Um, and I really, you know, I've read the advice before online that like the way to get good at reading is to read, and it's so true, right? So that was a fairly easy book. I definitely recommend it as someone's first light novel. It was entertaining, it was cool, it had action, it was slightly philosophical. <laughs> um, and by the end of it, it felt like I was just reading a book in English almost. It was really, really fun. Um, so I've actually started my second light novel. I'm working on something a little bit harder. It was one that I mentioned in a previous video that I was going to do. Um, I'm reading uh, Tate no Yusha, um, Rising of the Shield Hero. And so far, uh, I'm like, what, 11% through the book. So, you know, ah, right? Um, and I've been reading it on Kindle, just like I did Kino's Journey. And um, I highly suggest reading on a Kindle or an iPad or something like that. Something where you can just touch a word and automatically look up the meaning of it. Um, I loaded the JM Dict into here and I also have a Japanese to Japanese dictionary in here that I've been fooling around with a little bit too um, and trying to use that for uh, different words. And uh, it just makes the whole experience so much better. Uh, makes it a lot more doable and yeah, I'm a big fan of it. Um, use a Kindle <laughs> or an iPad. Uh, and I think I'm gonna make a second video or another video on that specifically and reading light novels and how to like tackle that in the beginning. Uh, yeah, so as far as me do, watching shows, right? Uh, and listening and getting immersion through that kind of way. Um, I, not much has changed, honestly. I've just been keep chucking along. I've actually um, been doing more immersion than I was in the past. Uh, I used to focus more on doing Anki, um, and I used to have the theory that Anki was where you learned, and in, um, your immersion, you know, the shows you watch, the animes and dramas and stuff like that, was where you uh, solidified things. And my opinion on that has shifted slightly, right? So now I have the opinion kind of that Anki is where you are introduced to things, 
and then your immersion, whether it be reading, especially reading actually, um, whether it be reading or watching things though, is where you kind of really learn it and solidify it, you know? So I used to give more importance to Anki than it has um, to me now. And now I just think Anki is a way to introduce things to you so that you can learn it in your immersion better. Um, because I've noticed that like, well, I can understand a sentence in Anki um, with one of my words that a lot of times in my immersion, I have to hear it in that to start really grasping it, right? And um, honestly, recently my immersion has gotten a lot better. Um, I can enjoy most like slice of life anime with not much trouble. Um, I can enjoy a lot of like fantasy stuff, you know, like high fantasy, not gonna happen. I don't really watch things like Ghost in the Shell. I've never watched Fate Stay Night or any of those shows, um, but I do like like we're running Kenshin, and I do like, um, what's that one that just came out? Like Demon Slayer, that one's really cool. Uh, Kimetsu, something. Either way, that show's awesome. Um, and I've noticed that my immersion with it has been really easy, especially when the main character talks. I can understand almost everything he says. Um, I, I don't know where people get like their percentage comp, you know, like, oh, I comprehend this percentage. Um, I don't know how to say it specifically, but like, my comprehension is good. <laughs> like, I can watch a show and understand what's going on and understand most of the words in it, just all on its own, and it's really awesome. Um, it's made my immersion a lot more fun. Um, as I mentioned before, I, uh, I watch a lot of anime with English subtitles on, and I don't read the subtitles, okay? And it's possible, it's definitely a doable thing, but for me, I have a wife, I'm a busy-ass adult, um, so when I have free time, I definitely want to spend time with her, but thankfully she is also a fan of anime She is also a weeb, right? So <laughs> she uh, loves to watch anime with me and we do this all the time every day together, right? So I might only watch one maybe two shows by myself a day um, And then I might watch like another three with her I would say on average I get at least three shows usually more um, And that's gone up recently um, but I believe a lot of times when I'm watching stuff with her, especially when I'm watching stuff with her, English subtitles on, and I just don't read them. I've actually noticed it's a little bit of a problem when I'm watching things. I think I was watching like Inglorious Bastards the other day, and there's a lot of German in that show, and I don't know German, but I kept not looking at the subtitles because I'm so trained not to. And I thought that was funny. I was like, oh shit, I gotta read this. I have no idea what the fuck they're saying. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, so writing, uh, like I said, I don't really practice writing at all. Um, I, I type things sometimes, and every once in a while I'll get on Hello Talk and like write something out. I try not to very often. Um, I'm really not outputting it, um, though I've noticed that things have been happening a lot more naturally for me. Same with speaking. I have not officially started speaking practice yet, but um, I'm gonna. I have to, right? It's gonna happen soon. Um, whether or not I wait till the year and a half mark or I start doing it sometime between now and then, um, I haven't decided yet, but my brain is just naturally outputting sometimes now like sometimes when i'm trying to think of something it almost comes to me faster or at least at the same speed as english and just things naturally pop out all the time it's it's almost like i can't even help it right which i think is part of the whole process uh, of this and um, i think that a lot of people or like what matt is trying to get to really and some other people who've reached fluency is that it'll just start happening, right? And it's kind of just started happening, so that's cool. Um, I don't know if I'm fully ready yet, I'm definitely not fluent yet, but yeah. So, cool. And then that pretty much covers most of the things that I've done, but let's talk about the future a little bit. Um, I mean, the plan at this point, now that I've finished all the Tango books, a lot of the excitement is over. Um, you know, but for, you know, for my future, keep mining, keep reading. Um, uh, the monolingual transition, this is actually something that I've recently got a couple of questions on. Um, am I doing the monolingual transition? Am I not? Have I made it? The answer is I have not made it yet, but I have started playing around with it. Um, and one of the big reasons why I haven't really started doing it yet, well, I have started looking up um, things in a Japanese dictionary, and like I said, when I'm reading, or I might have said, I don't know, I had to retake that a couple times. <laughs> uh, when I am reading, uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll have a Japanese to Japanese dictionary on, and I'll use that instead of an English to Japanese dictionary, and that's um, been useful. Sometimes I don't understand it, sometimes I do. Uh, and I'm, I'm doing that right now, and I have monolingual definitions on some of my cards, but I also have the English definitions, so I try to read the monolingual one first, and then the English one second. Um, really, the big thing that's keeping me from it is I'm waiting 
or I'm hoping that an Anki add-on will come out that will satisfy my needs. So like I said, the biggest issue for me with all of this is time constraint, right? I really only have so much time a day to do Anki and to immerse and do all these other things. Like really it's limited to just like a couple of hours unless I'm hanging out with my wife, you know? And doing Anki is not spending time uh, in my real life. It's time away from my real life. And I'm trying to do things in Japanese in my real life. So any more time on Anki really isn't feasible for me. So. Um, I did really, really like the concept and the idea of the Shimekai dictionary that uh, Kodama MIA came out with, um, and I did uh, put that on a lot of my stuff, but I don't love the add-on. While it, the idea and concept is brilliant, um, I'm having trouble with it. And the biggest thing is that um, I've edited the settings and stuff like that. I've actually rewritten a little bit of the script. Um, and I can't get it to function exactly the way it's supposed to. Um, I recently upgraded from Anki 2.0 to 2.1. When it was, I had it when it was on 2.0, and um, the issue that I was having was like there's an option to add furigana um, to all of your definitions so that all the kanji just have furigana above it. So it's not really part of your studying. It's just like a you can just read through it quickly, right? For some reason, the formatting does not work, and the furigana is not showing above my uh, definition characters. And so it makes it almost unreadable because it'll be like Mirai and then it'll spell out in, in you know, um, Kana, Mirai, and then another word, and then more Kana, and then another word, and then more Kana, and it's just very difficult to look through. Um, I do have like the Japanese support add on on there, and I have some other stuff, um, you know, that so in my mind, I can't figure out why it's not working. If you guys have any suggestions, I'm glad to hear it. Um, but I do know that one of the big things that uh, the people at MIA are doing in the future, because I talked to Yoga MIA about this, was they're planning on doing their own Shimekai Japanese to Japanese definitions for their add-on. So they recently just came out with an add-on. I think it's awesome. I've been using it a little bit in my cards and stuff. Um, it, I don't really care about pitch accent right now. Maybe I will in the future. Right now I'm just trying to get to basic fluency, and then I'll start thinking about pitch accent. I know that some people think you should do it before, but whatever. <laughs> it's not one of my concerns right now. Um, so yeah, I do like that app, but I cannot wait um, till they install the plugin where you can just start getting day to day definitions automatically. And once that happens, or once I really figure out how to make the Shimakai dictionary work, or uh, Kodoma MA um, does it again, and he figures out how to make it really work, then I will make that a monolingual transition. Um, up until then, I'll just keep on doing what I'm doing, adding monolingual definitions to what I can, um, and if it's not soon, if these things don't come about soon, like within the next month or so, then I'm just going to do it on my own, right? I'll just either write my own Anki add-on if I have to, um, or I will edit his, um, or I'll just do it the old-fashioned way with, you know, Colbury and just copy-paste, copy-paste, copy-paste real quick, right? I'll just do what I have to do. It's only 15 cards a day. So, but I'm trying not to do that because I'm trying to save time. So, cool. Uh... Oh yeah, and then last thing, because that was long story long, um, I'm gonna start outputting at some point. You know, in the next three to six months, I'll probably start working on my outputting. And the way I plan on doing that is just to hire somebody I, I talky. Um, I'm not rich, but money is not uh, as much of an issue for me, so I don't mind paying the $10 a month uh, for a resource if it saves me a lot of time. I also don't wanna just talk to random people on Discord who are most of the time just, you know, people like me. You know, I wanna talk to native people if I can. Um, and you know, I'll pay the, or ten dollars a week. I'll just pay the ten dollars a week to get you know a session in a week. Cool. Um, all right. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in here, and I can show you a little bit of my setup and my numbers and stuff like that, so you guys can see what's going on. Cool. So welcome to my computer. <laughs> um, so what I really wanted to just show you guys real quick was um, my Anki setup and how I've been doing things recently, um, and you know, kind of answer some of the questions that people have been having. Uh, so basically, how I've been doing things a lot recently uh, when I do my cards is I'll set up kind of like this, right? So this right here is the uh, Netflix frequency list. Um, I made this a couple of weeks ago, three, four weeks ago, um, and it's been really, really helpful. It goes through I made a whole video on it. Check out the video. <laughs> it goes through everything that's the most common, right? And I broke it off into segments. Um, and then I just have like G Show here, and then like uh, t -t 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 here's a copy of Take Him, and then here is one of my favorite websites. Um, it's the Dictionary of Japanese Grammar, but it is set up 
Um, it's got the basic, intermediate, and advanced all together, but it's also set up as a like search engine, so you can be like, what does Koto mean, you know? Cool. And it'll have all the entries from the dictionary back. Um, Japanese grammar, and then you can just click on it, and it also gives you example sentences, and a lot of times what it'll do also is it'll literally give you like what was physically in the book, and I think that's awesome. It's a really useful resource for looking up any grammar that you don't know, because like when you're looking up stuff in Disho, or if you're looking up something in um, like your uh, basic Japanese to Japanese dictionaries, like the Shimika dictionary or something like that, then you're not going to get the best answers for grammar, and I find that this is a lot better for grammar. So, let me go ahead and put that back. Um, cool. So, as you can see, you know, I have my Tango deck right here. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch, give me quick stats on that, right? So, why is that so big? Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. Cool. As you can see, guys, um, it's, com it's complete. 5,654 cards are mature, 45 are young and in learning, so, and then I have 2,339 that are buried or suspended. Um, a reason why a lot of those are suspended uh, is they were like a lot of the extra words, so um, I don't think Matt vs. Japan's Tango deck includes the extra words in the book. Like, if you see a word in here and it's got like another word below it, but it doesn't have a sentence with it and it doesn't have native, native audio, um, Nuke Marine still included those words and came up with a sentence for them in uh, his decks, and I suspended a lot of those because um, I didn't find them to be as useful. I also suspended um, some stuff in the beginning of like the N5 book um, that were just too easy. Like coming into this, like I said, I did do like six chapters of Genki, um, which I don't really even consider it as me studying Japanese, but like I did know Watashi, I did know Kawaii, you know, basic like words. <laughs> so yeah, so there's that. Um, if you go back to my other decks, you can see that I have a Subsidious Press Bank. Um, you can see that I've been started studying it on, what was it, April 17th, and that I've been pretty consistent with it, about 50 cards a day. Um, and I've been doing it for a little over a month. Stats on that. It's gonna look real hard, it's gonna be real hard to look at, but basically you can see that I have a massive deck. <laughs> And I really uh, only have 290 plus 85, so uh, that's you know almost 400 cards. I have 15 more to do today, so it'll be right around 400. I think that's about 390, um, and then a lot of stuff. And you'll notice that like a lot of my suspended cards, I only have 125 of them, and that's because when a lot of times when something comes I plus zero in my deck, like if you go into my browse section and you actually look at my decks, and you go like that and tag. I plus zero. Um, I, I delete a lot of these. So you can see that I only have 3,200. So what I'll do every couple of, uh, like every week or so, is I'll just take these and I'll delete them. And then I'll go over to Anki. I think this is the same way for this. You just go to tools, you go to check media, and you delete it. And that's so that I can keep my storage lower because, yeah, I'm, I have this on my phone and I do almost all my reviews on my phone and stuff like that. And when either I load something new in there and I try to load it on my phone, it just takes forever. <laughs> so every time I have to redo my database on my phone, I just, I want to make it easier. So I delete a lot of my cards and it gets rid of a lot of, a lot of the, the bulk crap that I am not using or will not be using, right? So yeah. Cool. And then, like I said, um, I started doing kanji again. Um, I've been doing lazy kanji. You can look at the stats real quick. I'm not done with the kanji deck yet, but I just do 20 a day. Um, it's been a lot easier because what I'll do is I'll find Japanese words and I'll associate those with that. So I have, you know, what, 340 to go. So easy day, right? Um, and I'm, like I said, I'm just doing a thousand cards. I have a thousand deck. So, to give you an example, what I'll be doing, what I do a lot of times now is, so like I have my Substance SRS bank here. Um, sometimes it's a little slow to load up, so I'll talk about it while I'm loading. Cool, so this is like an example of my sentence deck, right? So, um, just go back real quick, Substance SRS, um, and then it's gonna automatically pick out sentences for me. And then, you know, I'll, I'll look at the cards and I'll be like, oh, do I want this card, do I not want this card? And there's still some picking and choosing just like you would with regular sentence binding, but this is just so much faster. It's really awesome. So a lot of times what I'll do is like, okay, I have it set up just like, you know, Matt suggested so that you can see your colors and stuff like that. And if I click on it, you'll, you know, get the audio for the card, you know? And one of the cool things, you know, one of the big things that I have set up here um, that I think is really cool is, you know, I got my focus more displayed there, you got your sentence, your picture, and then your sentence with Furigana, and then um, I have a hover over option so that like you can't see the word and then you can see the word that or the sentence, um, and I think that's pretty cool. And then what I'll do is, you know, Tanoshi made it. 
I'll take this word and um, I will look it up in the Netflix 1K list. Um, and I'll just make sure that it's where it should be, right? So if I look this up in the Netflix 1K list, I should it's bigger for you guys. Thomas, you made it. Um, and I just make sure that it's in some of the most common words, right? So right now, the way I have my uh, Anki Dick set up, and so you guys can see it, is if I go over to my database manager, um, browse for database, uh, I have a priority list set up with mine, and uh, I have just like, you know, I'll compare it to just like my normal words, so you're known, right? Compare A to B, and it says I have 443 words. So what I recently did was I found the 500 most common words in Netflix that I did not know, um, and I used those words to put them in Morphin, and I can show you that, guy, that real quick, actually, because that was one of the things I said I wanted to show you guys, which I think is awesome. So this is a document um, that I did not make, you know, um, no compo made it on uh, New Perine's, uh Discord, <laughs> and uh, he set this up, and I think it is a work of pure genius. So what you do is you take all your known morphs, right, right here, and you put them in here. And the way you get your known morphs is if you just look at uh, your database, right? So here's Anki, here's my database. If I load, um, search for database A, all my known morphs into database A, and then I just put result as one column and hit database A, it'll show you my 3,752 known morphs, right? And you just take this copy and you take that and you paste it here into the known morph section, and then you go to summary, it'll update all this information, and then it'll tell you um, your current understanding, and then it'll give you do something really cool. So like right now, it's like, okay, you know, let me redo this one real quick, right? So go ahead and delete this. And then I will take my current known morphs, right? So I'll just highlight, take that, paste it here. It's gonna load it in. And I really suggest doing this unless you have a great computer on um, Google Spreadsheet. So you'll see it's thinking, it's cooking, right? And it's gonna come up with my known morphs right there and it should pretty much match. It's gonna be a little bit different because the way Morph Man works and um, all that stuff works. See, so it just went to zero for me deleting. Um, the way Morphman works compared to how uh, this spreadsheet works is it's gonna look at your morphs just a little bit differently because it doesn't uh, use a dictionary. So I think you get a little bit more words out of this um, when you use this because of compound words and stuff like that, but it should load up in just a second. So it loaded up my morphs, it thinks I have 3,884, so it gave me like an extra 100 words or so, but that's about right. And it tells you that my comp retention is at 82% for all of Netflix. And if I added another 500 morphs, specifically from the Netflix list, 500 that I didn't know, the next 500 most common ones, it'll bring my comp, uh, comp retention up to 85%. Um, we also have things like Death Note loaded up in here. Um, so like I know 1600 uh, morphs from Death Note. And then if I add 500 more specifically from Death Note, um, the next 500 most common, it'll bring my comprehension up to like 95%. And um, Hunter x Hunter is in here, Toradora's in here. Um, and I thought this was all really, really cool. Uh, this looks slightly off. There must be some wrong math going on there. Anyways, look at that fix. Um, and what's another thing that's really cool is if you take this right here, um, if you put the just particles thing in here and you load it into this section, it will ignore all the particles in the show. And if you take this one, it'll ignore particles and names in the shows, in the frequency lists. Um, but the most important thing, this all working with Morphman, is if you take this information, right, and you go to, say I wanna learn the next 500 most common uh, morphs in Netflix, what I'll do is I'll go to the next, there's a bunch of lists down here, right? So there's the actual like Netflix frequency list completely loaded up in here, where'd it go? I think I just passed it. Yeah, Netflix frequency report, which is all of the morphs in Netflix. Um, and then if you go to Netflix priority, it will show you everything you don't know so far. Um, and it also, if you say don't include names or don't include particles, it will take those out too, which is awesome. Um, so what you can do is you can just copy and paste this, the next 500, you throw it into a notepad, and then you load that up as your priority list into Morphman, and it is awesome, because now I'm gonna learn the next 500 most common words in Netflix that I don't currently know, right? Um, and that makes my words, my cards, a lot, lot easier, and I know they're effective, and I know that once I finish it, that I should have a general comprehension around, what was it? 
general comprehension of like 85% of all of Netflix, which is my goal right now. Um, once I do these 500 words, I might move on to a show, um, a specific show, uh, and do that show because it might be more interesting, um, or I might do like a couple of shows um, all together and see if that makes a little bit more sense for me. Basically, at that point, it's really up to you whether or not you want to just focus on like the Netflix list or if you wanted to do a frequency list for a specific show. Either way, you'd be golden at that point because now you're looking at like high level comprehension. Cool. So, showing you how I do that. Um, and that, like I said, uh, what I'll do is I'll just look at my cards every day and I will uh, search them out in, I will search them out in this frequency list and compare them and make sure everything's you know great. So uh, let's obsess or s. Uh, that worked out perfectly, right? So then I would just like, oh, okay, compare. It's perfect. Awesome. So the other thing that I've been doing a lot is kanji, right? And I'll do these every day. And what I'll do is I'll just go to study now, and then I'll take that kanji. And usually I know a word for it already. It's one of the, if it's really one of the most styles in common kanji. Like I said, I don't really think that's lined up specifically with the decks. But what I'll do is I'll just take this. Um, I will throw that kanji into my example word. Uh, section, right? I'll make sure that I'm on Japanese uh, and I'll throw a comma in there and then I will take that kanji and I will look for the most common word with that kanji or the most couple common um, by just searching this list and you know here it is, oyu, right? Um, and then from there I will just uh, add text or text-to-speech which it's always slow the first time I do this so give it a second, cool. Um, oh yeah, this does not work quite as well with um, 2.1, so what I have to do is copy it and then hit T and then, or control T and then I'll bring that up, right? And then I'll just record it. And uh, the first time I do it, like I said, it's always slow, but, and then cool. And then I'll add that card in there and then it'll be there. And I'll just see, cool, and there's my card. Cool, and then I do that for 20 more kanji. All right, guys, if you made it to the end of the video, congratulations. This was a long one, I know, but I had a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, the one-year point is really, really big, um, and it has been an awesome journey for me. Uh, I've really enjoyed learning Japanese, and I'm obviously going to continue to do this. Um, over this year, my goals have changed. My experience has really shaped um, you know, how I want to do this going forward and how I've done this. You know, I, I wish there was things that I could tell myself you know, a year ago as to what I should do now, but that's part of the learning curve, right? Um, I've really, really enjoyed this process. I'm not fluent yet, but I can understand how I could be in the somewhat near future, like that year and a half, two year mark. I can, I, I, you know, I might be really lucky and scratching, scratching at like that, that basic fluency level, um, and I'm really, really excited about that. Um, I hope that this goes to show people that you don't need to do this all day, every day. You don't need to go with the original hardcore age app method. Um, it is possible to do this and be an extrovert <laughs> and um, have you know a real life and a busy life and a family, like a wife and kids, um, you know, just like Mr. Perkins did it. Um, I just wanted to be, I wanted to prove that that it was possible and I feel like so far I've done an okay job of doing that. Like it could have been better. Um, there could have been more that I could have done, but um, I'm really, really proud of the progress I've made and I hope that some of the things that I have learned help some of you guys. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please go and throw them down below. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and check out some of my other videos and consider subscribing. I'm not gonna stop putting out content. In fact, I might put out more now that I feel like I've reached a level where um, I can help people. Um, like I said, I'm not fluent yet, but I'm definitely getting to the point where, you know, light novels are a really real possibility for me and video games have gotten a lot easier and watching, you know, anime and reading manga and watching dramas, all of those things are definitely within my realm of possibility now without much help. I can just do it. Um, yeah, and I'm really proud of the progress I've made. Um, I'll probably be taking the JCAD again. Um, I signed up for a, a password, um, so it's been six months since I've taken it, so it would be cool to see what my results were six months then to six months now. Um, I don't think that they're gonna get that much better because I have never really specifically studied grammar, um, but I know that my comprehension is a lot better, so maybe we'll see. Um, but anyways, guys, I think that's gonna be it. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video and following me on this journey.